Good morning, boys and girls. We're going to continue on with our Bible story, and today we're going to—it's uh, going to be titled "The Trial of Jesus." Uh, and let's do a quick review. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey, and the people shouted and waved palm branches, shouted "Hosanna to the King of Kings!" And then Jesus and his twelve disciples had the Last Supper, and he took the cup, and he took the cup. And he said, this wine represents my blood that is shed for you. He took the bread and he broke the bread and he said, this is my body that's broken for you. And these are things that we do today in church called communion um, to remember what Jesus did for us. And it's a good time to think about our lives and to repent and to get right with Jesus. And then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples, um, betrayed Jesus, went to the religious leaders, and um, they paid him 30 pieces of silver to lead them to Jesus because they wanted to arrest him and get rid of Jesus. And it, the Bible says that Satan went into Jesus, and obviously he sinned. At the same time, uh, Jesus is in the, after the Last Supper, Jesus is in, the, is in the Garden of Gethsemane praying. And he brought some disciples with him, Peter, James, and John. And they were too tired. They fell asleep. So boys and girls, if somebody asks you to pray, please, uh, my advice is to do it right away. Um, don't say you're going to do something and then fall asleep and not do it. Or just forget. Um, and Jesus is facing crucifixion on the cross, and he knows that. But he says, not my will, Father, but your will be done. And so Jesus, or God strengthened Jesus to obey and follow through with the plan. But it was scary and it was painful. And he knew what was coming. And that very night in the Garden of Gethsemane, Judas gave Jesus the kiss of death and led the Roman soldiers right to him and they arrested him. Now the trial. And they brought him to Caiaphas um, and the Sanhedrin. These are the religious leaders of the day. And it's amazing because Jesus did not defend himself. He was quiet. And they kept shouting accusations. And they'd bring people to try to accuse him of things. And they couldn't prove anything because no two witnesses would agree. Because there was no truth in what they were saying. Because Jesus never sinned. He never did anything wrong. So he's standing there, not saying anything. I don't know how he did it. And finally, Caiaphas gets upset and he says, Are you the Son of God? Are you Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God? And Jesus finally says, Yes, I am. Of course he is. Oh, he didn't like that. It says The Bible says he rent his clothes or he ripped his clothes and said, That's blasphemy. Um, you should be executed or crucified, and I'm going to send you to the Roman governor to do that. And the see, these are the religious leaders. The governmental leaders were Roman, and um, and his name was Pontius Pilate. So they took Jesus out. Now, at the same time this trial is going on, outside in the courtyard is his disciple Peter. Remember, Peter didn't want Jesus to wash his feet. He wanted to wash his head and his hands and his whole body. And, uh, and Peter said, oh, I, would, I, will, I will fight for your life. I will always be there for you. So in this courtyard, it was getting cool. And it was in the, this is the middle of the night they're doing this trial. And uh, so he uh, went over to the fire. And a servant girl said, Aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? Didn't I see you with Jesus? Peter says, no. He lied. He denied he knew Jesus once. And then another servant person said, I, I think I've seen you with Jesus. Aren't, aren't you? Aren't you one of his disciples? Two times. Peter says, no. Now he's getting really scared. And, he, and then the third time a man says, you have a Galilean accent. I think you're one. I've seen you with one of Jesus as one of Jesus' disciples, and for three times, 
Peter denies that he even knew it. And this time it says that he cussed and he swore. And he said, no, I don't know him. And at the very same time, look in the background, the guards are taking Jesus out of the trial. And uh, maybe their eyes met and Peter realized, I denied, I even know Jesus. And then the cock crowed. Just like Jesus had prophesied at the Last Supper, just like he'd said, Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, denied he even knew him three times. And then the Bible says he went out and wept because he knew he sinned, had done wrong. So, okay, so they're taking Jesus out after the Sanhedrin. They're taking him to Pontius Pilate. Now, Pontius Pilate is not a Christian man. And Pontius Pilate talked to Jesus for a little bit, and he says, I see no wrong in this man. I only see good. I hear he healed people. I hear he raised somebody from the dead. He's healed the blind. He's healed the crippled. He healed the leprous people. Um, wh what? What? But down in the crowds, what he doesn't know is those religious leaders are handing out money for the people to shout things and to say things against Jesus. And um, and the crowd starts shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And Pontius Pilate says, I see no wrong in this man. He says, why don't you take him out and have him flogged or beaten? And this is a scary picture, boys and girls. And so they took Jesus and it says they whipped him 29 times. Now, I don't know if you can see very well, boys and girls, but on the whip, there are a bunch of, of leather strips. It's not just one. There's a whole bunch of them. And they each have sharp stones or pieces of brass in them. So when they whipped Jesus, it hurt and it cut his back and he was bleeding. And many people never survived a whipping. But Jesus did it. And um, and the soldiers mocked him, and they made fun of him, and it says they spit on him. They said they pulled out the hairs in his beard. They were not nice to Jesus. It was terrible what they did to Jesus. And then, oh, they also put a crown of thorns on his head, squished him, thorns right into his head. And then they brought him back to Pontius Pilate. And Pontius Pilate, once again, he says, I see no wrong. And the crowds are yelling, crucify him, crucify him. He goes, oh, I know. It's the Passover. I always release one prisoner at the time of the Passover. So he went and he got, what well, I'm sure his soldiers did it for him, the biggest, baddest, meanest uh, prisoner that they could find, and his name was Barabbas, who was a murderer, and put him up there too and said, I'm going to release one. Do you want? Jesus, the man who healed people, or do you want Barabbas? And in the crowds, remember I told you, those religious leaders were out there in the crowds paying people to shout, release Barabbas. So, because he wanted to be, Pontius Pilate wanted to be popular, he wanted to be a well thought of, he said, who do you want me to release? And this Crowd shouted, shouting, release Barabbas. So he let Barabbas go, and then he goes, well, what do you want me to do with Jesus of Nazareth? And they then they shouted, crucify him. He says, I see no wrong. And do you see this bowl of water? So publicly, he took this bowl of water, and he washed his hands, and he said, I wash my hands of this man. And somebody in the crowd had the audacity the, to say, let his blood be on us and our children. Because Pontius Pilate really didn't see anything wrong with Jesus. But he listened to the crowds and did what they wanted. So he could be a popular leader. And then we're going to find out tomorrow more about what they do next. It's quite an ordeal um, what poor Jesus went through. And you can see the, the stripes on his back from the whipping. And um, there's a verse in the Bible that says, By his stripes 
we are healed. So when we're praying for healing for the sick and the hurting, you can use that verse and pray that verse because by his stripes, we are healed. It's in the Bible. So let's think of somebody that's sick right now. And if you don't know anybody, there's a lot of people that are sick with this Corona-19 virus that we don't know personally. I don't know personally, but many people in New York City and throughout the world. And we can pray for them. We know some people with cancer. We know some grandmas and grandpas that might need prayer or anybody at your house. So while I pray quietly, you pray too. While I pray out loud, you pray too. And if you know anybody personally, you say their names right out loud. It's okay. So let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, um, what you did for us is amazing. And those stripes that you took, the Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. I pray for anybody that might be sick. Pray for all the people that have this Corona-19 virus, Lord. Please touch them and heal them and raise them up. I pray for grandmas and grandpas and brothers and sisters and moms and dads that might be sick, that you would um, touch them and heal them because we know you are the great physician. We know you can heal people. We've learned about that. And we know it. And uh, God, I pray for that you would cast down fear and anxiety in anybody, um, that we will put our trust and our hope totally and completely in you, even in these difficult times. I pray that you bless my boys and girls, that they can learn at home, that they would be obedient and mindful of their parents, especially when it comes time to do their schoolwork. I pray that uh, we would focus on this time right around Easter and think about you and what you did for us. You willingly, you didn't defend yourself. You willingly went to the cross to pay for our sins. And we just thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. And help us to really realize what you did for us and how much you love us. Bless these boys and girls. Give them a great day. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said with me, amen. God bless you.